The United Nations really has no better friends than UNA and UNF now joined together in your strategic partnership. I want to thank a number of you, but I obviously uh, have to begin with uh, the great Ted Turner, uh, whose generosity and infectious spirit of optimism has contributed so much uh, to this effort. I want to thank Tim and Kathy Calvin for their extraordinary leadership and say thank you also to Patrick Madden, the new uh, executive director of UNA, not only for today's wonderful event, but for guiding and leading uh, this very, very important partnership. This partnership means new synergy and new energy. And I know that you will keep pushing uh, to galvanize the large, if somewhat silent, majority of Americans who support the very important work of the United Nations. Together, I know you'll push even harder on your core priorities, including the fight against measles, the nothing but nets campaign to stop malaria, promoting innovative ways to use mobile technology to advance development, and helping to empower and connect girls around the world through the tremendous Girl Up program. I'm excited, really, to imagine what you might come up with next and to see you implement it. I'd like to say a few brief words today about how the United Nations makes us all more secure in this new century, what we've accomplished of late, what challenges lie ahead, and how I hope you will be able to continue to help us in this effort. As you well know, we really are truly living in times of amazing change. Across the Middle East and North Africa, from Libya to Syria to Yemen, Brave demonstrators are standing up for their universal human rights. The fragile new nation of South Sudan is preparing to be born into great uncertainty about its security and borders in less than a month. Justice has finally caught up to Osama bin Laden and Ratko Mladic. Democracy is gaining fresh energy in Cote d'Ivoire, Haiti, and Egypt, as well as Tunisia. And we're all being challenged to break out of old habits and find new answers to 21st century challenges. Now more than ever, America's security and well-being are inextricably linked to those of people everywhere. Now more than ever, we need common responses to global problems. And that's why the United States is so much better off so much stronger, so much safer, and more secure in a world with the United Nations than we would be in a world without it. That's <laughs> That's the important case I have been making to the American public, and I need your help to reinforce it. Our argument is compelling and clear. The UN helps prevent conflict and keep the peace. In Iraq and Afghanistan, UN civilian missions are mediating local disputes, coordinating international aid, and helping advance democracy, all of which helps us responsibly to bring our soldiers home. The UN helps halt the proliferation of nuclear weapons. UN humanitarian agencies go where nobody else will to provide desperately needed food, shelter, and medicine. The UN helps countries combat poverty. The UN fosters democracy by helping strengthen fragile state institutions and supporting elections worldwide, as we've seen recently as in the run-up to the elections in Tunisia and the recently concluded elections in Guinea. Finally, the UN can bring countries together to advance universal human rights and condemn the world's worst indignities. You all get that, but not everybody else does. So we need your voices out there to help make clear the tremendous value that the UN offers the American taxpayer, particularly in these tough economic times. And we need your help to underscore the progress we've made on behalf of the American people. We have indeed 
repaired frayed relationships with countries around the world. We've ended needless American isolation on a wide range of issues. And as a consequence, we have gotten strong cooperation on things that matter most to our national security. In the past couple of years, with US leadership, the Security Council has imposed the toughest sanctions that Iran and North Korea have ever faced. In Libya, working with the Security Council, we swiftly imposed strong sanctions on Gaddafi and those who still stand by him and prevented impending massacres in Benghazi and elsewhere by authorizing the use of all necessary means to protect civilians. The Council also referred the situation in Libya to the International Criminal Court, the first time it has ever unanimously agreed on such a referral. And the General Assembly suspended Libya from the UN Human Rights Council by consensus, another historic first. In Cote d'Ivoire, U.S. efforts alongside those of others helped enable the victor, President Ouattara, to take office. In Haiti, after the devastating earthquake last year, we've worked closely with the United Nations to help ensure security and deliver vital humanitarian relief. In Sudan, due in large part to UN assistance, the referendum on independence for the South was held successfully, credibly, and on time. In the General Assembly, we have condemned Iran, Burma, and North Korea's human rights abuses by unprecedented vote margins. We fought and won protections for gay rights, and we helped create UN Women, a new agency dedicated to advancing women's rights. And, as Tim said, on the home front, working with Congress, the administration has cleared hundreds of millions of dollars in arrears to the United Nations that it accumulated between 2005 and 2008, and we are working hard to stay current in our payments. But even as we note these important accomplishments, we're mindful that we face serious challenges ahead. Let me mention just just three of these. First, some in Congress are again calling for the United States to withhold payment of our legally mandated dues. But as you know well, the UN can't deliver the results we want if we starve it of the resources it needs. It is in our interest to ensure that the rest of the world continues to pay almost three quarters of the cost of the United Nations work. Moreover, if we act like our treaty-based financial under obligations under the UN Charter are somehow optional, then others will too, which could leave us paying far more than we do today. Second, we're tackling some long-standing flaws within the UN system. Take the Human Rights Council. We've gotten real results in Geneva since being elected to the Council. From establishing a new special rapporteur to spotlight human rights abuses in Iran, to establishing commissions of inquiry to investigate abuses in places such as Cote d'Ivoire, Libya, and Syria. But we've still got a long way to go. And we're facing a Human Rights Council review process underway now in New York that sadly could move that body backward rather than forward. And then there's the consistent, unfair singling out of Israel. In Geneva and elsewhere, we aim to ensure that Israel gets fair and normal treatment across the UN system with the same rights and responsibilities as any other member state. Finally, there's the wider challenge of UN reform. Led by our outstanding new Ambassador for Management and Reform, Joe Torcella, we are pushing real reforms that can enable the UN to do more with less. We're enforcing budget discipline, aggressively promoting account a culture of accountability 
and transparency. We're pushing for a more meritocratic UN civilian workforce. We're restructuring the UN support systems for peacekeeping missions and overhauling the way the UN conducts its day-to-day -day business. In short, you are valued partners in all of this work. So please, keep at it. Help us to distinguish between fact and fiction about the UN. Help us to counter distortions and misinformation. Help us to generate big ideas from management reform to energy to development. Help us also to continue to make the argument in blunt and specific terms about how the United Nations helps the United States to share global burdens and advance our core national security interests. We need you now more than ever because we need the UN now more than ever. In the 21st century, the UN plays an indispensable role in advancing our interests and defending our values. The United Nations isn't perfect, far from it. But it provides a real return on our investment and it can help garner very important results. Strong US leadership is the engine that drives effective action from the United Nations, from peacekeeping to nuclear nonproliferation, from human rights to counterterrorism, from democracy to development. So thank you all so much for your tremendous support in our combined efforts to make the United Nations all that it can be. I'm grateful for your partnership and your friendship, and I look very much forward to continuing to work with you in your new incarnation. Thank you so much.